The first player device that we're going to take a look at is the dual arpeggio. Now, as I said in the previous chapter, you're not going to win an award for guessing what this does. It's two arpeggiators in one box. That actually is surprisingly useful. It can allow you to create really complex patterns, um, patterns that interplay with each other, and really more complex results uh, that sound more like effects than they do traditional arpeggios. So before we start having real fun with this device and seeing how we can use it creatively, let's take a look at the interface and have an overview so that you've got a good idea of what controls are present here. We've got a really simple load and save bar up at the top here. You're going to be very familiar with this if you already use Reason, but essentially you can hit load and you can uh, scroll through presets that are supplied for this device. You can also save your work here and scroll through any presets that may be loaded. We've got a very large hold button. This is essentially the same as a latch button in any other arpeggiator, meaning that if you have it engaged and you press a chord, it's just going to arpeggiate continuously. That's a mouthful, <laughs> but uh, it's basically just going to allow the notes to be played continuously. Really useful if you're quickly tweaking parameters and you don't want to program anything in, in just yet. Now, across to the left here are our main arpeggiator controls. These are repeated, and in fact, the entire interface is repeated, so it's just the same thing times two and you can see that we've got the same thing just repeated so once you master one of these it's really easy to get the hang of what the other one is doing as well we've got a engage and disengage button we've got a range control input range control here which allows you to decide how much of your keyboard is really triggering the arpeggiation effect this can be useful if you just want to have a number of chords in the center of your keyboard triggering the arpeggio and you want to play lead and bass down the bottom with the same patch, so something to think about. We've also got the rate control. This is synced right to our um, BPM, our tempo, so in this case 120 BPM, uh, but you can see it's in musical measures, uh, so nothing uh, too unexpected there. We've also got an octave control, which will go all the way up to four octaves and give us a four octave spread of the arpeggiation we are playing. We've got a traditional up, down, up, down, and random mode. This will change the order in which the notes are played that you input into the device. There's also a repeat control here, which just toggles on and off. To the right, this is really the sequence control area or sequence programming area, uh, much more of a graphical approach as opposed to the knobs here on the left. We've got three different um, modes we can engage and disengage. Step mode will decide how much uh, the arpeggio works across. So in this case, we're working across half a bar, eight steps. We can go up to 16 steps, which gives us an entire bar. And then below that, we've got a pattern mode. So this can work at the same time as the step mode, and it will play the pattern that you program in. And you can program these in, in varying lengths. So these are the note lengths that you're programming in. Uh, without the pattern mode engaged, it will simply play back the chords that you play in. At the bottom, we've got a velocity mode. So this will control the velocity of each note. We've got a shift step uh, thing across here, which will allow you to shift where the pattern starts from. We've got a trans master transpose, which you can, uh, which is really useful for transposing the whole thing an octave up or down or a fifth or a seventh. And this will obviously come into play when we've got two arpeggiators playing at once. We've then got a master gate length. And if you're using the pattern mode, this is very similar to changing the the length of the notes that you're programming in, but it works across the entire sequence. So whether you're using just step mode or pattern mode, this will work across the whole sequence and it's really useful for shortening and tightening up an arpeggio. Now, because we've got two arpeggiators, we can engage and disengage these independently. But apart from that, the second arpeggiator is identical to the top one. Oh, well, it's blue, but apart from that, it's the same. So one's green, one's blue and uh, they work in the same way. But the very fact we can have two arpeggiators playing on one patch at once is really interesting, either in polyphonic or monophonic mode, and we'll look at that next. This creates some really interesting results. I'm going to show you with this subtractor patch how we can use two arpeggiators at once.